Hello, welcome to today's Studio Armor Review. We're going to continue our look at the Exite Codex that I'm putting together based on the Tyranids. And we're continuing our look at the indigenous creatures or the models and units that require or have the behavioral instinct uh, special rule. So, <clears throat> what I have in front of you are some models by Corazon Miniatures. I'll put a link in the web in the description below. You can take a closer look. They've got pretty good models for some dinosaurs. Not a large selection. I think it's only six or seven maybe. But uh, they're actually pretty nice. Now, originally, I planned to use these as the uh, Termagants to line up with my uh, Warp Lord, or, uh, which counts as my Termagant. Uh, <clears throat> the concept being that you know, they'd be able to, their flesh bore would count as a spitting attack. Kind of made sense at the start, but I settled upon a different approach for the Termagants. So these will continue to serve the purpose of uh, Termagants as well as Hermagants until I do finish my uh, actual, what I call my Death Spitters, which are the stand-ins for the Termagants. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in a little more detail. I um, have one of my son's uh, works in progress for his Tyranid Army to give you a size comparison of these miniatures. <clears throat> They're really, uh, you know, they're smaller. They still fit on a 25 millimeter base. But if you compare that to the size of a human being, you know, that's pretty much a uh, large dog size, a bobcat size. And I don't know if you've ever been close up to uh, a wild animal of that size. They can be pretty powerful and vicious. So I still think, given the stats that a hermigant has, or Hermogont, I should say, <clears throat> being, you know, strength three, toughness three, I think they do a fairly good job representing uh, the Gant. So, these I'm actually named uh, Dromaeosaurs, the ones on the left, the tan colored, and I decided that instead of making a special things you add on to the basic dinosaur, well, it, each of the different variants or upgrades you could put on a, a Gant, Termagant, would be, uh, or Hermagant, sorry, would basically represent a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, a different species, right? So that, hence I have a second set that's the blue color. So let's take a closer look at what we have here with the, whoops, that's definitely out of focus, huh? Okay, it's about as good as that one's going to get. <clears throat> so this is the basic Dromaeosaur. In fact, that's what these models represent. Uh, in real life, they're actually scale models. Uh, 150, ooh, I forget which, what scale they are. I have to take a look at the website. <laughs> I've actually forgotten. But these are basically scale miniatures of uh, Dromaeosaurs. And I've painted them up to represent... Just something that you'd, you'd find in nature. You know, I looked at some of the bird drawings, uh, pictures and such. Uh, nothing really exotic, just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put them some pretty traditionally plain uh, camouflaging type of uh, birds look like. And came up on the uh, multiple tans, browns, uh, and, and white scheme with a yellow uh, skin. So these represent the base Hermagant. <clears throat> and uh, I do have 30 models. I'm not going to put all of them in front of you. It's just, that's, there's really no point in that. And I decided to create a second batch of 30 to do, they'll do double service as my uh, the termagants that have the uh, devourer, but they're my termagants that actually have the adrenal glands. So Adrenal glands isn't always thought of as a, an important upgrade for your Gants. But when you think of it, <coughs> giving a squad of Gants strength 4, you are going to be able to glance vehicles to death with uh, Gants. And if it's a large enough group, you can swarm over uh, several vehicle models or even squadrons if they're packed too close together. And you can do some pretty significant damage since a Gant has uh, two attacks base 3 on the charge. And you end up with, that's, well, 3 times 30, that's 90 attacks. 
hitting two thirds of the time, 60 attacks, you're gonna get 10 hull points uh, glancing on sixes. So 10 hull points will take out three vehicles. So it's a pretty impressive, uh, you know, firepower, if you, for lack of a better term. And so I do plan on using, and have used actually, the uh, adrenal glands on my Hermagants. So these are my Dynanicus. So the Dromaeosaurs are to the left, the Dynanicus to the right. And I, again, trying to use a different species to represent the different kind of upgrades. <clears throat> the only two other upgrades you can give are, uh, what well, it's Toxin Sacks, so basically giving a, uh, them poison. And I basically call that the Venom Raptor. Haven't made a model of it. Don't know uh, if I even use that much. Uh, granted, with a Strength 3, Space Range, you're going to wound on 5s. But again, with 90 attacks going in, uh, it's just, I don't know if it's worth the extra points. And finally, the, uh, the last one, if you actually put both the scything, or the toxin sacks and the adrenal glands on something, that's uh, pretty potent. That's also very expensive, Gant. So I call him my uh, Mega Ornithosaurus. <laughs> uh, so you're trying to name my own dinosaur in that case. Again, no model yet, but uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to see if it does it, is there ever a time when I would want to spend the extra points because a base squad of regular Gants is only 50 points. A base squad of a fully upgraded with Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands is 100 points. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot. I don't know if it's worth it. So, so this is what I have for my, my Gants, and it, right now they're Gants. Now, I do have another plan for my Termagants, the ones that actually shoot. And I'm going to use a different miniature company, uh, Magister Militum, I think is the name, and we'll be putting, actually creating a, a I can't, can't really pronounce the particular dinosaur's name real well, so I'm not going to try it. At this point, I'll practice it later and when I actually build it, <clears throat> but it's a kind of like an ankylosaurus, but a much smaller version and more lightly armed, but the idea of a gant that can shoot. Instead of using spitting weapons, which I've, I've done with the pterosaurs and a couple other things, I wanted to kind of try to limit that to special models. I stumbled upon the idea, uh, actually I think from Godzilla, watching some of the older versions of Godzilla, and in one of them, an alien's head implanted a device on his the back of his head that helped control him. So I kind of thought, well, wait a second, Eldar, our Exodites, so why wouldn't they use technology to tap into the beast's brain <clears throat> and instincts to basically control a weapon? So what's, what I'm going to do for the Gants, uh, I call them death spitters, is they're going to be a quadruped dinosaur, a small one. Maybe it's a little bit larger than the ones in front of you. And on his back will be a weapon mount, uh, a small one, uh, kind of like an infantry weapon size that would count as the flesh borer or the actual uh, devourer. And on the back of his head, or on his head, it's, you know, I'll create a small Eldar-looking device. Just using green stuff. It's simple to mold something. It doesn't need to be real intricate or fancy. That represents kind of like the cybernetic thing that's on It's reading the thoughts of the, the dinosaur. When the dinosaur focuses on something he wants to kill or hurt, that information is transmitted to the gun, the gun targets and fires. So that's the, the concept. So these will end up being, what you see in front of you, are my Hermagants, all close combat. And then these Despiters with the weapon on their back will actually serve as my Termagants. All right. So give me a few seconds here while I switch some models around. I'll show you the next set of models that uh, are in the troop space. Okay, so now, moving on to the other troop choice, which are Ripper Swarms. Uh, I want to take the same approach with uh, different species representing different uh, versions of the Ripper Swarm. And again, the versions being the ba different upgrades you can get. So, <clears throat> the basic, I initially was going to do something like with Velociraptors or whatever, but from a QRF models, I found these Coelophysis models. And so they're actually 
pretty small. They're sitting on a 40 millimeter base right there. Again, here's a, a human for uh, looks. Honestly, it's it pretty much the same scale as you'd expect if, if you saw the Jurassic Park movie. Uh, I think it was the second one. Uh, yeah, I think it was the second one. Cetophysis is attacking the guys. Uh, they're just swarms over you and rip you apart. So anyway, it's a, I thought it's a pretty good basic ripper swarm approach. Uh, you know, matches. Uh, put three models on the base. Uh, ends up being a fairly representative of a three wound model. Now this is a regular ripper swarm model. Um, my son's not quite finished painting it. Uh, you can see this, the size is basically the same, so it's a very good visual match uh, on the table. Now, the, the models actually are pretty good. They're, they're not that expensive. I think it was eight bucks for almost like a buck a piece, I think, something like that. Uh, of course, the way the, the currencies fluctuate, it could, it could have changed already, but uh, again, there's a link in the description below for QRF. And it, I think they got four different poses, and so... Yeah, here's a couple different heads up, heads down, all of them running. Looks real, really impressive as far you know from a uh, opponent's perspective. You've got these these models of dinosaurs charging at your your lines, and it really conveys the impression of the the uh, exodites. Now, the ripper swarms can also have things like. Uh, Toxin sacs and um, adrenal glands. And one, there's another thing they can actually get, and that is spine fists of all things. And I just figured, how am I possible? What, how could it happen? There's no way I can figure out what I can, what I can do. And literally out of the blue, one day, I was thinking about bombardier beetles. And you know, here's an insect that actually has a ranged weapon. <laughs> Uh, and it is explosive, um, extremely hot uh, chemical attack. It actually can burn you. Uh, now, granted, you're not going to get really hurt, but uh, it'll be definitely painful uh, for a little bit. But, but with something that's smaller, uh, it can it can kill some. Uh, so I said, well, it's great. Let's I could actually you put spine fists on Ripper swarms and call them bombardier beetles. And I noticed that Reaper has their bones line has beetle swarms. And so I used those and tried to paint it up kind of like a bombardier beetle and it kind of loses something in the translation because there's really there's only so much you can see in a swarm of these little beetles. There's like 12 or 13 beetles on that base, maybe more. And in fact when I when I Game buddies looked at it and thought, what are skulls doing on a base? That's what he had thought. And I guess, yeah, it does look that way. So this is uh, just a Bones miniature, Reaper miniature Bones line. Uh, Beetle Swarm, two come per package, so they're really cheap. And I haven't flocked the bases yet. But those represent a Beetle Swarm that is a, a, a Ripper Swarm that has spine fists. So it actually has a 12-inch sh shooting attack. And it's a t the weapons... The weapon spine fist shoot at two, uh, basically it equals to your attack. So a ripper swarm has four attacks. So that means it has four shots at 12 inch range. And that's pretty good. Um, wouldn't necessarily uh, say they're, you know, fantastic. But I think that they do uh, a good job representing the spine fist upgrade. So I do, I have used these and I really do like them because I can shoot before going into close combat and again ripper swarms they're just meant to give the opponent dilemma what are you going to shoot the ripper swarms that are charging you at a fast pace i grab their infantry so they're they're six inches but they're going to run or are you going to shoot the other things that are headed towards you you know where are you going to put your attacks and so ripper swarms are 54 points base no 39 points for a base three base um, model unit. So it's not that much of an investment uh, considering each base has uh, three wounds. And granted, Swarm, there are ways that, that the opponent can deal with them, but that just means you have to learn how to apply your beasts, your Ripper Swarms, against targets that can't evaporate them quickly. Uh, make them a, a unit that causes 
your opponent a dilemma for as long as possible. And no matter how many you have, charge them in. Just get them in there, soak up damage, keep the opponent <clears throat> pinned down, distracted, while other stuff comes in later and, and tears things apart. So, so those are the uh, troops that I currently have, troop units. Uh, again, the Hermagants, um, and what will also stand as Termagants. My plans for Termagants in the future, and my two Ripper Swarm variations. So I hope you found some uh, ideas out of this video. Share, like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next Studio Armor review. Bye-bye. Mm,